Welcome back Cracker Jack. Hopefully you're ready to program right now because I am going to teach you about this cool thing called init in this tutorial. And also, I should probably mention this. I don't want to sound like a little baby or anything, but I had to go to the doctors um about 2 days ago cuz I was having like carpal tunnel syndromes and since I program all day, um my wrist was like I was getting like these weird pains in it. So, I'm wearing this thing called a computer glove, which is I don't even know how to explain it. It looks like kind of like an MMA glove with padding on the bottom. And I also have, I'm using a weird type of mouse. Go ahead and Google vertical mouse and check it out. That's what I'm using right now. And it's like huge. So um, if I'm like kind of look like a dummy moving my mouse around, or I'm like, how do you click things? It's because I'm using this weird type of mouse. But anyways, I'm going to teach you guys about this thing called init, which is essentially it's a special type of function that gets called automatically whenever you create an object. You don't have to call it explicitly. And let's uh, go ahead and see a simple example right now. So I'm going to make a class called Tuna. And the first thing I'm going to make is that init function. And it's going to look kind of weird. So put def for define a function and put this. Put two underscores. And you see how this pops up? I actually want to type it out. Two underscores, then I n it and then two more underscores so of course this is a weird name and what this means is I think it stands for like instantiate or something but I always um think of it like initialize or this is what you're supposed to do initially even though that's probably not the most technical um way to look at it and this whatever code you write in here is going to get called as soon as you create your object so later on we're going to see typically what we do is we put our object name dot separator and then the function we don't have to do it with this it's kind of weird and I'll also explain why it's useful in just a bit so since this is a class tuna every time we create a tuna we'll just print out like uh, I don't know what's tuna say I think that's what tuna says alright now just for comparison let me make one more regular function so you guys can see them side by side how they're different so swim self and this will just like print out I am swimming alright so we already know what most most of this does right now we have a normal class that has this new type of init function and also the old this is just like a basic I don't know normal function I guess I'll call it alright so the first thing I want to do is I want to just go ahead and make an object from this class because we need an object to access all the stuff in the class. So I'm going to name this tuna flipper and of course set him equal to tuna. Simple enough. Now check this out. With the normal functions like swim, what we need to do is we just put flipper dot separator swim and that's how we use it. However, when I run this, as you can see, it called init first and then it explicitly called swim but we didn't call in it anywhere so what's going on well that's what I'm saying anytime you create any object from the tuna class the first thing it does before it goes on to any other line is it looks for an init function and it calls whatever is in here so you don't need to call it explicitly like you would swim or any other normal function that we learn up to this point so now you're thinking, okay, that's, uh, I don't know, interesting, I guess, but why the heck is that useful? Why would you ever want an init method? It kind of like gives you less control over calling things explicitly. Well, let me show you guys, now that we understand the concept of init, a practical example of when this would be useful. So, I don't know, did we work with like a enemy, the enemy class before for like our pretend computer game? Well, if not, say that we're making a computer game and we need to build some enemies for our like uh, main character to fight against so first let's go ahead and create that special init function now of course this is gonna take self and also what I want to do in this game is every single time we create an enemy for the user to battle against I want to give them a certain amount of energy some enemies are gonna have you know more energy or more life than others like for example a regular dude might only have five and the main boss that you have to fight at the end he might have like 20 or 30 or something 
So since we need to give it um, a value, I'll just pass it in as x and we'll store it in some variable. So this enemy's energy level is going to be equal to whatever value we pass in, like x. So simple enough, whenever we create an enemy, that's what we do. Now let's make one more simple function that's just a normal one, just for comparison. And this would just like print out their energy or something. Energy. And it'll just print self energy. So now what we have to do is create some enemies from the enemy class. Uh, what's a, I'll name one Jason because every person named Jason, it seems like, you know, they're kind of evil. I don't want to say, maybe it's the movie. Maybe I'm stereotyping or maybe it's true. Who knows? So of course, we're going to create an object from the enemy class and as soon as we create an object from here, we need to pass it in a value. Now this value is going to be thrown in X and is essentially going to be their energy level. So I'll give him, I don't know, we'll say he has five energy. So now what this does is it creates a brand new object with five energy. So after this, we can create a new object called Sandy. And I don't know, maybe she's like the boss or something. So we'll say that she has, uh, I don't know, 18 energy. She's a little bit tougher than Jason. So now I created two different objects from the same class, two different enemies, but they both have different energy levels. Pretty cool, if you ask me. So now we can just treat them like normal objects, get energy, and also Sandy. Stupid freaking glove. Actually, that's just any typo I make, even if I make like a, a, a syntax error or anything, I'm just going to blame it on this glove now. It's like my excuse. So anyways, check it out. Whenever you run this, of course, all we're doing right here is initializing or creating an object with a certain amount of energy. And down here below, we can just treat them like normal objects. However, they now are customized due to this init function. So this is a practical example of what in it does, how to pass values in as your initializer, and also how to use it differently than you would a normal function. So hopefully you guys understand now. And also in my GUI tutorials, um, we use in it a lot. So now that we understand the concept of it, we can follow along with those a little bit better. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys next time.